Spreads, totals, props. Lots of ways to win money, but also lots of ways to lose. It's time for some sharp analysis. All sports, all over the globe, all the time. Home of the guest better jackpot, it's Corbett's. Here is your host, Dylan Corbett. All right, welcome in. It has been far too long since I've been behind a microphone. It's been far too long since we've had Brendan Duarte's voice greet us here to welcome us into Corbett's. On a Saturday, we've been posting our plays. Had another solid, positive day for both of us. Um, just tweeting them out. But again, this um, being posted, the Saturday edition of Corbett's. Don't worry, I've been putting money in every single day. We're going to have Brendan Duarte, our new guest better, has not gone away. That will return. But things are settled here. We've got the Minnesota background, uh, the wall of losers, Matt called it. Uh, not wrong, you know. We've got maybe some Anthony Edwards, of course, you know. Oh, it's the Minneapolis miracle. Um, but I've also got a tour of my entire office coming out <clears throat> that I'll post on social media, so look for that. But let's get to it. Uh, the guru, Matthew Cruz, and he's got some college basketball plays for you. I've been starting to get a little hotter at college basketball, so I'm pumped. Uh, you know, I took a couple days off because I'm moving, but I'm starting to see the board a little bit more clearly. I was picking my spots. Then I saw this UFC card today. Oh, God. So a lot of plays from me, but uh, we'll get to it again, and let's always cash as usual. A couple of system plays here. Um, I'll stick with college football, and then we'll get to Matt's college football and keep the main course at College Hoops uh, for the end of this podcast. I like the under in Tennessee, Texas A&M. It's at 51. I think there's going to be uh, not that many points. Tennessee's actually been a little bit of a cover machine the last two weeks lately. They covered against Florida. Um, so I'm worried about this number in terms of sides, but I think this is going to be an under game, uh, under 51. I like Iowa State here in the Big 12 championship. Just too many points for me. I know Oklahoma has been – I've been riding them uh, since they, what, went one and two and then went on a tear. Uh, I think Iowa State's a really good team. Dan Campbell, uh, maybe it's Matt Campbell, but their coach, um, he is going to be a hot commodity, not just in college football, but in the NFL as well, I've seen. So I like Iowa State there. Let's see if they can win that, uh, plus six. Uh, let's see here. Other college football. Let's go to a service academy game. I like Army here, plus two and a half. You're going to see this stat floating around about the unders, how it's like 35 and eight when service academies play. That scares the hell out of me, especially when this total's in the 30s. So I'll play Army here. I think a pretty solid team. Uh, and then I've got Penn State blowing out Illinois. I know they just hired their new coach. Um, maybe you've got some more. Isn't it uh, Brett Belima or something? Brett Belima. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, that's actually – I mean, I'm not an Illinois football fan by any means, but that's got to be an encouraging hire. It's yeah. a guy who's had track record success in the Big Ten at Wisconsin, at a good program. Look, Lovey didn't have any success, but he really did change the culture. He put the steps in place. His downfall was he wasn't able to recruit. Bottom line, you got to recruit. Um, so, yeah, that's an encouraging hire for Illinois for sure. Yeah, he was on game day this morning. Like, he's jacked up, encouraging hire. And as you said, the record wasn't there, but Illinois had some huge games where they stepped up and kind of shocked some people. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's lastly there for me. I like Penn State to blow out Illinois just because it's the remnants of a team without a coach. Um, and then over in Cincinnati, Tulsa, this is a low total, over 45. I also love Tulsa here. I don't know why. I might be falling for something here, but Tulsa plus 14 and a half is where I got it. Uh, and that wraps up my college football. Yeah, for me, let's see here. I like that Iowa State played too. Those, te those teams are too evenly matched. Um, I mean, how Iowa State's got like, they took home pretty much every Big 12 category of like offensive, defensive, first teams, coach, all that shit. Matt Campbell's a good coach. Um, I don't know if I'll play that. If I do, it'll be Iowa State. Uh, Big Ten Championship, I am backing Ohio State here, minus 18 and a half. I think this is a uh, name your score and we'll win by that amount type of game. Yeah. Ohio State, um, they are obviously in the good graces of the committee, but um, they need nothing less than a, at least a three-touchdown win here, so I'm backing them. Alabama minus 17. Look, this Florida team has been reeling. Uh, it could be a trap as simple as uh, Alabama's blown out everyone and Florida's coming off a horrific loss to LSU. Yeah. But even before LSU, Florida wasn't playing well. Trask had started to fall down a little bit. So we'll see how that game is. And then you already know, Notre Dame plus 10 and a half. Look, when the announcements came out that Notre Dame was joining – the ACC this year, I've tweeted, pray for the ACC. I warned you guys, nobody listened. 
Yeah. They're doing what we knew we they would do and get to the game here. Um, this is a disrespectful line, and I think I can say that as that's an objective statement. A team who just who already beat you, you're now they're ten and a half points worse because of a quarterback when the DJ Uncle Louie threw for four hundred and fifty yards and scored forty points. I mean, it's not like uh Notre Dame beat them ten to three the first time and all of a sudden Lawrence right. is back. So uh I hope that's a shootout. And Clemson does have some guys on defense back, so that'll be a difference. And Clemson probably wins, but ten and so, a half points. Uh, did it not open? Maybe the action network's wrong here, but it did it open where Vegas had this as kind of like a seven in the hook game, and I think it's been public money that is just you know driving this price and line all the way up. I've seen ten and a half all week, so okay. maybe if it opened, but they've been off for two weeks, so it could have sure. come out two weeks ago. I, I, I'm also seeing, God, we might owe Zach Kelly an apology here. I'm starting to see Ian Book pop up on Mel Kuyper's uh, position rate rankings for quarterback. He's like top eight, you know. So like... yeah, no, when uh, <laughs> when Zach said that he was he was going in the third round, I had just the day before saw a mock with the Bears taking him in the seventh, so that's why I said seventh round. I don't but I mean, he's playing well, and he could kind of cement his legacy today absolutely yeah there's nothing uh more than i want to see them beat them because it would knock them out of the playoff everyone now the conversation all week's been so what about a two loss clemson are they gonna get in i mean two <laughs> losses against Notre names better than what iowa state or blah blah who the hell knows clemson probably wins but Notre Dame keeps it close all right, that does it for college football. Let's get to college hoops here. Gonzaga making their return, right? Um, and maybe the, – so they're coming back here against Iowa. Obviously, they've dealt with COVID within the program. This is going to be a battle. I mean, two of the top teams in the country. I went to the total here because I think this is sky high. 171 and a half for a team that's coming off of COVID issues. I know, look, Iowa can blow the doors off of people, but now they're facing Gonzaga. So I, I'm playing the under there on an astronomical college basketball total. Um, let's see here. I like uh, <clears throat> Wisconsin-Milwaukee in a pick em against Green Bay. Green Bay's winless, um, and this is a pick em somehow. So I like Milwaukee here. I think they're the non-public side, so I'll go with that. I like the under in Notre Dame hoops in Purdue. Um, too many points for me in Baylor, Kansas State. I'm on Kansas State plus 17 there. Hopefully a uh, Big 12 opponent can keep that one tight. And uh, then lately, uh, a late night cash in college hoops as we head out west, Cal Poly and Loyola Marymount um, heading out to Marco's territory there. I like over 138. Matt, what do you got? It's Marco. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no play in the Iowa good night game, but <clears throat> I am very excited to watch that. Like I said, no play just because everything points to Iowa covering that up, but at the same time, the eye test, I don't know if Iowa can guard. Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. Granted, I don't know that Gonzaga can guard Iowa, so we'll see, but I think Gonzaga is a lot more athletic, even a little more talented. That should be a hell of a game, and that's like almost an NBA total. <laughs> With yeah, not good. Enough. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Ah, I'm on the other side of you on uh, Baylor in the state. I think Baylor's too good, but uh, there was a pretty similar matchup last night <clears throat> where we were opposite, and you hit it with West Virginia Iowa State. It's top two or three team in the big 12 versus the bottom two teams, but right. uh, Baylor off the layoff. I think they, they, I think they might start slow. First half it's close, but I think Baylor will pull away in the end. Let's see here. I guess it's an all Buckeye day for me. I don't know. Ohio State and hoops as well. Plus two, they get EJ Liddell back. They're leading scorer, leading rebounder. Uh, he was out with mono. So I don't know how effective he'll be but they definitely missed him against Purdue and last Sunday when I had him. So I think they are a better team than Ohio State. That line should be a pick em. Uh Bradley O, uh, Miami, Ohio. I'm on the Braves. You already know, minus 11. Hit them four ways on Thursday night yeah. in the action right away. Uh, Bradley could out-rebound a lot of Power 5 teams, and I'm not saying that as a Bradley alum. They are an elite rebounding team, I think, they, or they have a 10-plus rebound advantage today on Miami. They need to stop turning the ball over as much, but uh, I think they'll get that figured out. And then also Bradley's an elite defensive team as yeah. well, like top 15 in the country for sure there. So uh, I like Bradley to win by double digits there. North Carolina, UK, Kentucky. I have under 141 here. Uh, these teams are 
very evenly matched, and they're very evenly pretty freaking bad on offense. I mean, they make four threes a game. They shoot 27 and 25% from three, respectively. They shoot less than 70% from the free throw line. They turn the ball over 16 and a half times a game, almost 20% of their possession. Mm. Uh, True shooting percentage is only 50%. That is not good at all. Under 141 there. As long as we don't go to overtime, I like that. And that's because we both. All right, that's good stuff. So we've got some great knowledge for you, some great picks coming back. No NFL for you? We got two Saturday games oh, here. Yeah. No. I'll filibuster while you take a peek because I've got just uh, two plays here. There are two games, and I'm going to Carolina Green Bay. It is the late game. And yes, for the listening audience, I am pulling out the Luke Keekley Carolina jersey, which I will be wearing all day today. Let's go, Panthers. I've got them at plus eight. Too many points for a very competitive team. I know Green Bay is good. They, I got them in the Super Bowl. I've been telling you that all year. I like Carolina here with the number, and let's go over, over 51 and a half. I got a Hail Mary push on the total uh, against Green Bay and Lions on Sunday, um, but most people lost if you got that closing line by a half point. But let's get this one over Carolina and Green Bay. And then the other game, I believe, uh, coming up here, that's going to be – uh, Bills Broncos. I actually like a play there. All right. I think I think forty nine is too many points. I like under forty nine there. Um, Bills defense is not spectacular. Broncos, that's their only chance is to play a defensive game. I mean, they kept that Kansas City game low scoring, and uh, yeah, forty nine too many. I like under there. Yeah, Bill's one of the hottest teams in the NFL, too, and their defense plays. Broncos have a pretty solid defense as well. Of course, you're familiar with Vic Fangs Fangio, Matt, from his time in Chicago. Um, before we get it, get you out of here again, Corbett's, we're pumped to be back. I am live in Minneapolis. Uh, Going to be doing a lot of cool stuff here, so – um it you might have to resubscribe again it's been a couple of days off so we do appreciate you sticking with us and we're pumped to get you some content back out there too ufc it's a, just a fight night i am all over the board i love so many of these matchups i'm not going to bore you bore you with the particulars but i've got like plus 285 dogs plus 135 there's some short favorites i love greg hardy is fighting in the main card uh so greg hardy i like him as minus 115 uh, you know, there's some good fights here. Josie Aldo, this is a fight I do want to talk about. He's the king, right? He's one of the best to ever do it. He, he's lost a couple fights in a row now. It's getting ugly to watch a guy that was so good in this prime. He's now in his mid-30s. And this guy, Marlon Vera, he's about to take over the division. Marlon Vera, I like him, plus 130. All those line there as a favorite is just out of respect for the king. Uh, I love Vera there. And then the fight night uh, main event, I like Jeff ne- It's basically a pick em. I like Jeff Neal here, minus 110 against Steven Thompson. Again, if you like UFC, I think it's going to be a great fight night. All right, he's Matthew Cruz, and I'm Dylan Corbett. Corbett's, we're back. You know how we do it, and let's cash.